Those ideas now to the uh, Scottish Conservative MP for Bantam Buck and uh, David Ducat. Welcome to you indeed. I mean, do you feel that uh, Scottish fishermen have been sold out in the deal that's been agreed to in Brussels? I think sold out at this stage is a bit too strong. I think we're very disappointed uh, that the implementation period is going to be longer than we would have liked. We were proposing a nine-month bridge period between Brexit Day and the end of the calendar year as a kind of compromise. And that's been added to by another 12 months. So that's one thing we're disappointed about. And as, as you were saying, Michael Gove and Ruth Davidson and the fishing industry were all hoping to have a bit more control over our access to our waters during the implementation period. And that hasn't come through as I much mean, as we'd like. I mean, in fact, they're going to have less control than they've got now because uh, the common fishing policy will be decided and Britain will only have input. It yeah. won't actually have... I mean, we, we, have, we have received assurances that there will be safeguards um, in, in place during the implementation period. My job and the job of my colleagues, not just the Scottish Conservatives, but any MP with a fishing constituency, is to make sure we hold the government to account to make sure those safeguards are applied. I mean, so what is the red line for the final deal to come in? in well, the final deal is the end state is still in play. So um, we're still looking at leaving the EU, leaving the CFP, getting back full control of our waters, which is kind of reassuring. Uh, and having spoken to Michael Gove myself recently, we know that, or the EU knows, that anything they do to, to us it, during that implementation period, we can do back to them after we have full control. I mean, frankly put, there is this suggestion that the fishing industry and access to fishing may well be a bargaining chip because the industry is yeah. relatively small compared to things where we really do want to break, like finance, for example, yeah. which is important to I Scotland. Mean, I mean, yes, indeed. In terms of per overall percentage of the GDP, it's relatively small. But Tiny. It's, it's, it's much larger in people's minds. It's, it's a totemic industry. It's all through the uh, re oh. EU referendum campaign. It was used as a, as a benchmark, as a marker for how we were going to deliver Brexit. Um, and, and the... Um, uh, the Brexiteers in particular, uh, and anyone involved with the fishing mm. communities are, are not going to forget that. We need to make sure that um, the end state, and, the, and, mm. and uh, as, as you mentioned earlier, we, ha we are meeting with the Prime Minister yeah. later today I mean, to, I'm, I'm to just make gonna, that clear as well. just going to put to you, I mean, what happens if the government says, look, David, we're, we're sorry, but we've got a good deal overall, but actually we haven't got everything we wanted on fishing. Would, you, would that be the moment that you would say, I'm not going to accept this deal? Uh, well, I've, I've already publicly said that I won't vote for any Brexit deal or fisheries bill that doesn't advance the interests of British fishermen. So if, if, if and that is your red line is basically... I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping very much that it won't come to that. I mean, we still have a ways to go to make, to, 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 to make the final deal. Uh, and I, I, like I said, there's been a lot of disappointment in yesterday's announcement, but we're not, that's not the end of the, uh, end of the conversation. I mean, we are going to have to allow some boats into our waters, aren't we? Because we don't actually have enough oh, to, to fish them out. Um, but that was always going to be the case. There, there will be, as the Prime Minister said in her Mansion House speech, there will be reciprocal access. But that's, there's re reciprocal access between the EU and Norway, the EU and the Faroe Islands, the EU and uh, uh, Iceland. All that's going to be different is the UK becomes an independent coastal state and we will agree reciprocal access between those in other independent coastal states. Are you looking to rebuild the Scottish fishing industry? Absolutely. I mean, uh, not just get more boats there. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a sea of opportunity out there. We have, uh, we could be doubling the, the amount of fish landed in, in the UK. Uh, relatively simply. It'll take a bit of time, we need to build up the fleet, we need to build up processing capacity, um, but that's the sea of opportunity that the Scottish Fishing, mm -hmm. Fishermen's Federation always talk about. That's why we're here. So you're going to be on the flotilla tomorrow with Jacob Rees-Mogg? Um, I don't believe so. I'm going to be a little bit busy with uh, talking to the likes of yourself <laughs> and uh, I've got a select committee meeting uh, tomorrow, so, uh, uh, today as well. So, I mean, do you think protests like that, tipping fish into the Thames, help? I. Well, we'll have to wait and see to see what difference that makes. I think it's, 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 I think it's important, important to recognise and to demonstrate the, the strength of feeling within the fishing community. And I think there was a similar flotilla uh, down the Thames during the EU campaign, you may remember, that definitely showed that, uh, that strength of feeling. And a rival one as well, uh, from, led by Mr. Bob Geldof. Yeah. <laughs> David Ducat, thank you very much indeed for joining us.